Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for a video that's basically what I live for on this channel. I love the idea of products that really seem more expensive than they actually are. Over the entire life of my channel, I feel like I take special note of different things that I've used where I'm just like, how is it this affordable? How are they getting away with selling it for this price? You know, I love running into things like that. It is my joy in the makeup world. And so in this video, I thought, why not share a little compilation of some things that fall into that category. And it really started with, spoiler alert here, Revlon Super Lustrous Lipsticks. I was talking about them in a recent video and I was just really thinking about the weight of them and how really luxurious they feel for as inexpensive as they are. You know, they're under $5. Lots of reasons why I like those and I'll get into it in a little bit. But it kind of got the wheels turning about so many other products that I've had this feeling about. And honestly, I'm a little worried that maybe there are some things I might be forgetting here. So feel free to bring anything up in the comments section, anything that you've experienced where you're like, man, this could really hang with my high-end stuff, or this product could go in disguise somewhere and I would be thinking, wow, I'd pay triple the price for it. That's the way I feel about these products. It's not quite, I didn't really plan out this video with the intention of a full face. I just wanted to think about those things that I've genuinely had this opinion about. So I've got them all on my face today and I'm going to just be sort of talking you through it and doing some cutaways of the products in action as they're applied. Here's the first thing, Maybelline Superstay Foundation. Uh, I've got two here because I actually mixed two to get the shade I'm wearing today. For a long time I wore Warm Nude and then kind of discovered, eh, that might be a little dark, so I pull in Natural Ivory. The mix of the two seems to be just right right now, about equal parts of each. And I just dab it around my face like I always do with stuff and blend it in with my beauty blender. And in some cases when we're talking about these products, there may be nothing special about the packaging. Like it's not really a fancy look, but really mainly what the product is doing. But I gotta say, Maybelline with the glass bottle, the pump that's happening here, just for look and feel of the product, it does have a bit more of a high-end vibe going on. And the coverage is just so tremendous. And I've been kind of going back to my Hourglass Veil foundation here and there lately, and it really made me think of my Maybelline. And I was just kind of having these thoughts like, the Maybelline is really just as good as this, I think. And staying power-wise, it's so, so solid for me. And it is a matte full coverage foundation, but I do not not feel like I come off dry with this at all. I think it stays looking fresh all the way through my day. It's kind of sad how you will establish your thoughts on a product and then you'll maybe put it down for a while so you can experiment and play with other things. But really, like, these are amazing. And I think quality-wise, they're really just as good as some high-end stuff that's out there. Now let's move on to a concealer. I think it's kind of difficult to find um, really moisturizing, hydrating concealers in the drugstore price range. But I have come up with one recently and it's the Pacifica Natural Minerals Liquid Cover Full Coverage Lasting Concealer and it's probably the closest thing to Tarte's Creaseless Concealer, the Maracuja Infused Concealer that's almost like a little sticky as you blend it in, like it's really got some hydration in there and it's great for dry under eyes. Well this is also great for dry under eyes and it provides tremendous coverage to boot so I just love this stuff and again I just kind of feel like it can hang with some of those higher priced items and really do the very same thing, but it's more rare at the drugstore to turn up something that's not going to develop sort of this unattractive dry down potentially. I just know that's been a complaint of some different concealers. I think months ago when I was talking about this concealer, I'm like, no, there's no mozzarella cheese in there, but it does have a little string to it. And when you feel it just between the fingers, if you have a chance to see this in store, like you can tell it's really carrying some moisture. And I think it's a great thing for the under eye area. But as you saw in the demo, I could get away with pretty much using that all over the face if need be. Let's move on to some blushes. I love that in this video there are things that I'm talking about that I've really held these opinions on for some time. And for years now, I have definitely felt that there are some blushes from e.l.f. that are just slaying it. Like, they are completely seeming more expensive than they are. And I'm talking about their primer-infused blushes. So this is the one in the shade Always Rosy. Uh, they got a small range of shades, and they feel just like, you, you touch it and you're s instantly surprised by, like, how good is that? Almost even a little smoother than the feel of those, like, Bare Minerals pressed blushes I was talking about in a recent video. It's that 
that smooth and very pigmented. And this shade, while it looks kind of mauve and maybe just a little bit blah, it's really gorgeous on the cheeks. So I fell in love with this formula. I think I bought every kind that they made in this, this primer infused blush. And then a little more recently, they put out the luminous blushes. And let me tell you, they're executing at the same level with these. You've just got a shimmery kind of glowy blush. And this is the one I'm wearing today in the shade called Glowy Rose. To me, it's very much a true like coral color. And I just love the gentle glow, but really impressive pigment that this adds to the cheeks. And it's just glorious. And I could picture if this was like no packaging involved and this was just handed over to me, I might have guessed this is something like the balm might have created, you know, or like I said, bare minerals maybe, but it's even smoother. Like just insanely good blushes. And they're selling them for, I don't know, five, six bucks. It's crazy. And this would be one of those situations where, yeah, the packaging is really no frills with these, right? There's no mirror, there's nothing fancy, but it's all about the quality of the product. Now for a highlight, there are a lot of highlights I'm loving lately, but I kind of went back to something that I think performs effectively as a highlight, but on top of that, it literally, I think, fools people into thinking you've got great skin. I'm feeling like I'm having a great skin day, and it's a lot due to this product. This is from Revolution, and it's their liquid illuminator in the shade Champagne. And if this is not a dupe for Becca's Shimmering Skin Perfector Liquids, I don't know what is. Like, this is so great. And you've got your little dropper style applicator here. The tone is just perfection. It's got just that hint of warmth in there, but it's going to be brightening on anybody. And so you get a little bit of that on your hand is what I like to do. And then I take a small synthetic brush. The Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush is great for it. Dab in and then just dab it on your cheeks. That's probably the easiest um, build it up slowly kind of application that I just really enjoy. And then you've got this effect on the skin. It's like there's so much pigment in here. There's so much shine, but yet it's not going to stay tacky at all, but it's not going to look the least bit dry, and it's like that kind of fooling people about your skin kind of thing that's going on here that's so great. It just gives you this radiance that does not look makeup -y. It's just kind of like, oh, turn your head and you've got this pretty glow. Love it. The next thing is something I've been thinking about for a long time that I use downstairs. Um, I've used it, I want to say like pretty much the entire summer, and it's kind of like a setting spray for my skincare, except I don't really think of it like setting spray. I think of it just like like an extra hydration surge at the end of my nighttime skincare. And you could use it on top of makeup too. It's this e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist. This is so great. I've used about, you know, down to there now, so I'm pretty familiar with it. It has this great, very natural coconut type scent to it. It says hydrates skin and refreshes makeup with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. And I'm weird like this, but I like don't feel as though my nighttime skincare is complete until I take my couple of spritzes with this all over my skin. And if Bub is anywhere nearby, I'll spray him. I'll spray the girls. Like they all love it. It's a very refreshing yet kind of soothing scent and I do feel like it offers added hydration to the skin. And I have another spray down there and it's the Too Faced Hangover Mist and it's kind of like I think a coconut water infused type product. So I was using that the other day and kind of comparing it to this and I thought gosh I feel like the e.l.f. not only does it provide a little more hydration, I like the way the sprayer pumps down better and I like the scent better. <laughs> Just kind of crazy. So I think this could pass for a higher end product. It's really really nice. When we're talking about eyeshadow, I do think there are going to be different lines where I could look at maybe almost any brand and pluck something that I really liked from it. Some certain thing that I thought they were doing really well. I think of certain things from Milani, certain things from Maybelline. Rimmel's got a few fantastic eyeshadow products. Just things here and there that I love. But across the board, the best value and perhaps the most shocking value, I think, is coming from Profusion. And I've mentioned it quite a few times, so maybe you're all on board with this already, but the Profusion palettes that are this size and at Walmart, they're going to cost you under $5. They're incredibly good for the price. Don't tell Profusion, but I'd pay a lot more for something like this. Like, this is the Mattes palette. This is what I'm wearing today. Um, you know, I just threw a little bit of zing in the crease for a little warm brown. I deepened 
ended up with a little bit of that color called Devious there. And then going on the lid, I used a little bit of sugar and also dull. Just for a really soft, super basic, like I'm kind of letting the lashes do the talking type of look today. And then I smudged underneath the eye more of the Zing shade just to give a little subtle definition. The shades are incredibly smooth, nicely pigmented. I really like the variety in here because I think some of these browns almost have a little plum going on, which is sort of unique, but they're so nicely intense and I just can't get over the price. There are high-end brands that could learn from the way these mattes are done from Profusion. And you know I've talked about the Smoky palette that they're doing before and I would be happy to get some more. I think they've got a few other varieties in this size and you know how I feel about the blush palettes too. Under $5, tremendous quality could totally pass for high-end products. And sorry, I know I talked about those a lot lately, but it is what it is. That is the current state of drugstore makeup. They are winning it with eyeshadow. Now for lip products. If you're a balm person and you like a tinted lip balm, I don't know that it gets much better than the Nivea Blackberry Lip Care for color, for feel. Um, this feels downright luxurious going on in the lips. I don't care who you are, the moisture level is what you're needing this time of year. If you're spending any time outside, you're getting some sun exposure, you come back in, you're like, oh, my lips just feel dry and cracked. Like, get some of this on there and you will have a gorgeous level of color on top of it all that can hang with your false slash glam looks. That can look great if you're doing hardly anything else on the face. Like, I don't care. This is amazing and it's like $2 and change. It's like, Nivea, do you need a global ambassador for your tinted lip balms? I'm here for it. I love it. It's another one of those situations where does the packaging look luxe particularly? No, it doesn't. But it's what's on the inside that counts, y'all. Okay, Revlon Super Lustrous Lipsticks, the catalyst for this whole video. Uh, there is something very, very high-end about these lipstick tubes. And I really started appreciating it more when I investigated a couple of newer shades that I hadn't tried before. And I'm like, wow, the weight of this lipstick, that pretty gold twist up, the solid, nothing loose and shaky about it, nature of the way that product works. I like how they're showing me the color on the bottom. I also like how the top caps are see-through. So when you're browsing in the drugstore, you're not having to crack it open to confirm like, oh, does that have shimmer in it? Or how dark is that? That red. Revlon is doing so much right with these. So next time you pick one of these up, really appreciate the fact that like it's got a nice tight twist to it. It's got a good weight to it. And on top of that, the lipsticks are buttery, creamy, smooth. Um, they've got a variety of finishes too. You could choose from matte. They have some sheer options. They have the creams. They have the pearl ones. And this has been a long-standing product. This is something that drugstore makeup users can trace back decades, you know, that they were using these. So I think it's pretty impressive that they're holding this kind of quality and they're still around. So I love the shade called Bear Affair. I mentioned it recently, but it's a gorgeous shade. It's one of my newer ones. And I'm just obsessed with the wearability of that nude. I think it looks great. Also, Berry Smoothie. That's a Revlon lip butter shade adopted into the Super Lustrous line. And you can't go wrong with that soft, gentle pink. Just enough depth to maybe feel a little more mature than some of the lighter, brighter pinks. And I know so many people were obsessed with that shade of lip butter. So it's nice to see that it lives on in this form format, which I'm very happy about. And then, I'm not sure if this one's still around, but one of my favorite Revlon Super Lustrous lipsticks of all time is probably Rich Girl Red. And this is going to be your warm, sheer red. It's so beautiful. So it's part of the sheer line, just like um, Berry Smoothie is. It's like the easiest approach you can take to red. It's so not fussy. It has a very, like, tinted balm kind of vibe. But I just love that tone. I picture somebody in a little sundress, just going out with very minimal makeup on. Then they just threw on this sheer red lip and everybody's having a great time. The commercial is already happening in my head for this product. And then lastly, guys, um, perhaps even more luxurious feeling on the lips. Probably the most luxurious feeling drugstore lip product has got to be the L'Oreal Color Reese Shines. I've been singing the praises of these products since they first came out. They are so rich, so creamy. It's like a lipstick lip gloss hybrid when you put them on your lips. And as you will notice in application, one pass does it. You're not going to build up to get to that shiny place, but you're just going to take one 
one pass across and it's going to deposit enough product on your lips to give you creamy full color and all that shine. So I can't talk about these without mentioning the shade Varnish Rosewood. That's my longtime jam. That's the shade that likes to live in the purse. It looks great with absolutely any makeup look. You will immediately look more polished, more put together. And not to mention the packaging on these, which I think is pretty spectacular as well. It's not like actual glass or ceramic or something here, but it's a total step up from where most things are at in the drugstore, right? And then I'm trying to kind of branch out a little bit and use more of the shades that I have, including this one called Lacquered Strawberry. That's what I've been wearing throughout the video. It's giving me this kind of hot pink look. Again, love that shine, love the pigmentation. It's just so hard to argue with these lip products, guys. Not to dive into a controversial topic here, but Jaclyn Hill's lipstick line was named So Rich. And when I had tried some of those, I remember thinking like, they're more somewhere between a cream and a matte to me. Like they don't have this super rich, super luxe feel to them on the lips. These are what could be named So Rich because they are just this creamy kind of thickness with the shine and everything. And they seem way more expensive than they are. Guys, I love this topic. I would love it if we could continue this conversation in the comments section with anything you've run across where you feel like, man, that product seems way more expensive than it is. Let me know and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.